Dave Rubin rails against the idea that people always want to be a victim class. Hey, we're having an ideas emergency over here. It, exactly. But, I mean, Dave Rubin always talks about how offensive it is that people would consider themselves based upon their victimhood. If Dave Rubin got rid of his sense of being victimized, all that would be left would be the scruffy beard that he's trying to grow. Uh, here he is, walking the streets, complaining about an article in the Quillette. Now, uh, Matt, I'm not terribly familiar with Quillette. I know we've talked about it here a little bit. How would you characterize Quillette? Is this a left-wing magazine? Uh, no, it's sort of the IDW's uh, sort of magazine. I see. So it's the IDW's. Yeah, but... They, but of late, they've been critical of uh, Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson. Well, isn't that the point of the IDW, right? Mm. Right? Ideas. Not tribal. Not about, not about victimhood. Here's Dave Rubin taking a walk to clear his head now that he's been criticized. And very upset that none of his friends have contacted him. This is sort of, sort of sad. On everybody. Okay, so first off, uh, all right, wow, we got we got over 400 already. Jeez, this thing's flying. Okay, cool. So first off, um, I would just like to say I'm having a perfectly lovely day, despite what you might be seeing on Twitter. Um, I don't. Think I just got so. my hair. Cut. I'm not mad. I'm having a protein shake. It's a mint chocolate something. It's really good. Whey protein. Really nice. Don't want to get hit by Pause a car. While Let me just tell you something about when I'm having a really good day. When I'm having a really good day, let me tell you what I don't do. Go on and do a streaming video for 12 minutes talking about everybody's being mean to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Good. Whey protein. Really nice. Don't want to get hit by a car while I'm walking here. Um, you sure about that? And, you know, I got into some Twitter nonsense this morning and it's so, ugh, it's just gross. It's all just gross so for those of you that aren't uh playing along on twitter god bless you and you're probably living your best life um but basically uh, quillette which is run by claire lehman who's a former guest of mine who has been very uh friendly and nice to me uh on Pause my it. show what and does a former guest mean oh he's not gonna have him back on have her back on i think that's the implication mm, so much about ideas okay good in all of our private exchanges, uh, has done about four hit pieces on me recently, um, where they're really trying to single me out, uh, out of the IDW crew, that I'm somehow the worst because I sit down and, and talk to some people that they don't like, and I talk to these people on the right, and I don't question them exactly as they want, and all of these things. Uh, and they keep just writing piece after piece. Now, I got a, a shit ton of haters these days, which really is just the sign that I'm doing something good. I mean, <laughs> you know, I got news for you. Um, just because people don't like you does not mean you're doing something good. Sometimes people just don't like you. I'm going to apply this to ISIS. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, a lot of people complain about ISIS. From all sides. That's from all sides. Yeah, I must be doing something right. Go ahead. It really is. Like, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Hundreds of thousands if not millions of people seem to enjoy what I'm doing. I have no guilt related to what I'm doing. I'm living my life and doing my thing. I don't wander around worrying about destroying people and hating people and all of this nonsense. So anyway, uh, Quillette Definitely went after not, me again right. a couple of days ago. This one was by a former guest of mine, which is interesting. So this one, it's not only that it's in Quillette, which Claire Lehman, who's a former guest of mine, who's a guest after I've had people like Molyneux and Cernovich and Paul Joseph Watson and whoever and Lauren Southern and whoever else they're going for me on. I'm walking up a major hill. I'll just say to defend Dave, they could have mentioned it when they were on with Dave. That's right. That's right. Interesting. I mean, usually the idea that they were a guest would be that um, they're not it gives leftists. them a little bit more credibility. Yeah. Right. Like, but go ahead. Right here. So if I start running out of breath, you'll know why. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, this guest though was, was Kathy Young, who's a writer I had on the show, I don't know, about three years ago or something. And there's, there's so many things I could say about her personally from my experience with her, but I'm not going to do any of that. And, and there might be a couple moments on Twitter this morning where I slightly took the, the low road and I, 
I apologize not to her. I apologize to myself and to you guys if I did do that. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Pause it. I also want to apologize to myself if I am saying anything that is in any way, um, you know, rude towards Dave Rubin. I want to apologize to me. And, and there's a lot of things you could be saying, too, but you're not going to look, say them. There's a lot of things I could be saying. I'm not going to say that. Uh, but if I do, and if I have, I want to apologize to me. <laughs> you get caught in this nonsense. Um, but I, I just want to be clear about something. I have no guilt on my conscience of anyone I've talked to or any question I've asked or not asked. Have I made... That's the um, second time he said no Every guilt. interview absolutely perfect? Of course not. I'm not a perfect human being. Mm. And these people who are just endless haters... Uh, it's like, what are you doing with your lives? Um, but in any event, oh, what's positive. going on? I guess he was addressing that to me. Um, I'm just doing the show. Uh, raising my kids, doing the show. Good. Those haters. Uh, it's like, what are you doing with your lives? Um, but in any event, what's going on here really is that, and this is the goddamn truth. This is the truth, the truth, the truth. The truth. I have left the left and survived. And, every, and I've been calling out the left as a progressive, as a liberal for years for years and years, I was doing it. Nice, we got over a thousand people in here, that's awesome. Sweet. For years and years, I was doing it. I was doing it from the left. I was saying, guys, let's stop calling everyone racist. Let's stop calling everyone a bigot. Let's make sound arguments. All of these things, not everyone garbage truck is not who's against gay marriage, <laughs> second you turn for gay marriage is a homophobe, unless Barack Obama was a homophobe the first time he ran for president, as well as Hillary Clinton. Um, Trump is not a Nazi and the people that vote for him are not Nazis and he's not Hitler and the more that you guys do these types of things in, instead of making sound arguments the more that you're going to uh, man I got to get off this hill the more that you're going to pin yourself <laughs> yeah, into do. an intellectual corner <laughs> not the hill you and what's happening die on. is I kept making <laughs> warnings to the left people started paying attention to it Every, all the things that I've been saying for years have now burst forth for everyone to see. The left has gone completely fucking bananas. And Pause it. So, I've so, so Quillette is the left now. Yep. Anybody who disagrees with him is the left. Quillette's basically Jacobin from Australia. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Own people that you can leave the left and you will survive. You're going to be okay. But that's not even it. What it really is about is I go to college campuses and sell out comedy clubs. And I was on tour for a year with Jordan Peterson. And I met literally thousands and thousands of good conservatives who can agree to disagree, who I tell them that I'm gay married, they don't care, or they just are willing to live in the same society as me. Nice mm -hmm. of I tell them so that I'm begrudgingly pro-choice, which is a really hard one for conservatives to, to swallow, but they can agree to have a conversation about it. I'm against the death penalty. Most conservatives aren't. I mean, all of this shit that I Posit. repeatedly... You know, he, uh, back then, you know, when, a couple of years ago, when he interviewed these people, also would say he was for single-payer health insurance mm. and limited government. Fascinating. Then begrudgingly, begrudgingly for single-payer health insurance. Good. Say over and over, and I don't get any hate from anyone on the right. And this whole idea, and all of these Quillette hippies, is the idea is if you build bridges <laughs> to the right... That that somehow is bad and awful, even though most of the IDW crew are on. I, I don't know if they really what they think personally anymore, but are or at least were on the left at one point, right? So the fact that I've escaped, they have to take out an extremely high cost on me because they can't have you knowing that you can escape. But you can escape. It's your fucking life. Do whatever the hell you want to do Positive. with your. Imagine the delusion here. Imagine the delusion. Here. He really should have got his talking points together a bit more before yeah. he went on I Periscope. I sort of feel like the Quillette thing is trying to prove that you can't leave the left is a weird talking point, boy. All right, continue. I always wanted to know what it was like to, like, for instance, put a fatwa on Salman Rushdie. And I feel like that, <laughs> that's what we're doing with Dave Rubin yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Life. Live, you live your life as you want. So it's like they're trying to take me out right now and take him out you guys won't do it <laughs> you won't do it um, I'm gonna keep doing what I think is right and I'll talk to the people that I want to talk to that are interesting and some of them are gonna be shady every now and again Pause it. and I <laughs> you're gonna talk to shady people I mean you could talk to shady people but why don't you call them out on their shadiness the bad thing is not so much that he's I mean like I I don't know that I would do it but 
Certainly there are people who talk to shady people and they, one of the first questions are like, why are you so shady? <laughs> or, hey, don't you think this is shady? Or here's what I'm going to talk about your shadiness. But that doesn't seem to come up. Yeah, David said says, we're part of the new center, aren't we? Right, exactly. You're so shady. We're both basking in the shade. Go ahead. Do it. Um, I'm going to keep doing what I think is right. And I'll talk to the people that I want to talk to that are interesting. And some of them are going to be shady every now and again. And I suspect that the people that are always coming after me uh, have done some pretty shady shit and childish shit. Pause it. And... Uh, I feel like I'm doing pretty childish shit right now, actually. Okay. Childish shit. And uh, anyway, it's just kind of boring more than anything else. So it's what's unfortunate about this one is Tell that Kathy thought. was on my show and it was after Cernovich was on. She never said a word to me. And as I said, Claire was on my show after all of them were on my, on my show. She never said a word to me either. And it's like, all right, you guys, you want to use me? Okay, we can play that game, I suppose. Um, but you won't own me. Maybe you use me, but you won't own me. So anyway, so it's just boring, petulant, childish nonsense. And, you know, I know maybe I should have let some of it go this morning. And it's another beautiful day in Los Angeles, yeah. as it usually is. And I probably should have just let it go. But you got to defend yourself. You know, we, this, this mob rule that we live through is, is really weird. Positive. And there, it's like, is there a mob behind him or... The mob rule, you know, uh, Quillette, what is it, the mob? Is he saying? They're coming. They're coming Wait, is for he him. saying it's mafia? Ooh. Ooh, maybe that's He's what's gonna going get on whacked. here. Oh, Quillette is some type of money laundering enterprise for the, for the mob. That's weird. Good. You don't defend yourself. Why would someone else defend you? You know what I mean? So sometimes you got to do something that you don't inherently want to do. And I won't bow to the principle that in those interviews, I could have done this or that different. I've acknowledged that repeatedly. But she's trying to take me out. You will not take me out. I'm not going anywhere. If anything, in a weird way, I feel, um, I feel bizarrely empowered right now, except for the fact that I'm walking down the street talking into my phone like a schmuck. I, I feel pretty <laughs> bizarrely empowered right now because you know most of my haters are just YouTube losers that want to get that want to get clicks off me, right? And it's weird to be that person. Like I wake up, I have no hate for anybody. I wake up. And I try to do my day and then whatever. I don't wake up and be like, what did this person say? I'm going to make a video about that person. Okay. But I get a lot of these. Hey, right, I, I just want to say it's long. Uh, I, I want to say that I don't do that in my own defense. Cause I think he may be talking about me in some respect. Yeah. In my own defense, I never wake up and say, what did, what did Dave Rubin say today? Yeah. I don't, I don't do that. What I do is I wake up, uh, you know, make breakfast for the kids, make, make them lunch walk down to work, and then I walk into the office, and I go, Brendan, what did Dave Rubin do today? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, that's why you have producers. <laughs> that's exactly right. Good. It's all right. That's fine. And by the way, I'm not talking about legitimate criticism, which I, I acknowledge all the time. If I, didn't, if I had this person on, and should I have asked this qu question or that question, so. or if I focused too much on the left, although there's plenty of proof as today is why I do it. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm just talking about the endless trolls and haters that just want clicks and clout and all that nonsense. Clout chasers. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a load of nonsense. It's all, it's all just drivel, but you have to defend yourself. And, and I do have to say something else, which is, it's been really interesting today oh seeing God. who has publicly defended me and who will only privately message me. Because I'm getting texts from people that won't defend me publicly. I don't know where the whole IDW crew has been on this. I haven't oh, really heard from anybody. And that's all right, people are, people are busy. Not everyone's just spending I'm all so their busy. day in the Twitter I've, sphere, thank God. Um, but I've been getting a lot of texts from people. And then, and then a certain set of people are defending me publicly. And uh, it's appreciated because in these weird moments, you kind of figure out who your friends are. And I say friends, not allies. I hate that word allies. They're always like, oh, that person's a gay ally. Like, we're going to war. You got a weapon? What do you got? Like, no, I hate the phrase ally. It's so stupid. Um, but, but there was a mob after him. Then he this name is... checks some uh, people who actually would. Um... Actually, we should play that part. Yeah, this is. This is... He's, uh, he's about to pull a real Michael Tracy. This part's a little bit sad. Friends. So, uh, Bridget Fedezi today and Art Tavana and uh, Colin Moriarty, Yasma Mohammed. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some some big time people. David Raboy. Big timers. Big timers. I think we can leave it there. I'm uh, starting to feel bad for him. Is you he know, crying? You know, uh, I think there's a reason why he's wearing those mirrored sunglasses. And sometimes you, you wear those. Now, 
What was also uh, sort of amazing after uh, Dave Rubin went on his extended sort of um, walk, I mean, there it, it was fascinating because it was in the bright sunlight, his long, long walk through his neighborhood. But in, sunny, in many ways, he was walking through the darkness. And um, he said that he would more than likely invite more shady people onto his show. And he had talked about in there how the IDW crew hasn't seemed to even reach out, even yeah. in private, to say, so hey, much. solidarity, David. And, and I want to make it clear, yesterday on this program and in a tweet, I reached out to David and I said, solidarity. And if you wanted to talk about it, I will give you a platform to talk about. Now, I don't have a million subscribers. We have almost like 550 or something like that. And then we, you know, the podcast as well. So, you know, not quite a million, but close. And I'd give you an opportunity, David, to defend yourself against this uh, left-wing rag quillette. <laughs> but instead, what David does apparently is choose to reach out to Milo Yiannopoulos. And I haven't heard that name in a while. It's true. And sometimes, folks, you can't, you can't go back. Sometimes those bur bridges get burned. <laughs> And uh, so here is an exchange that Milo put on, uh, uh, I guess, it's what like is it? Telegram or something? Telegram like that? or something like that. Milo writes, total coincidence that the day I post about him weepishly here, I think it was on, waspishly, excuse me, was it... Um, was this on Telegram or was this on like Gab or something else or what else was it? He posted this on, I think, Telegram or Gab or something like that. Oh, you can go uh, public on Telegram he like just that? just printed it out and put it up around places. Okay. Well, uh, and um, so uh, uh, total coincidence, the day I post about him wapishly, uh, waspishly here, Dave Rubin texts me after two years. Maybe he was still in recovery mode for those two years. Of pretending I don't exist. And uh, 7.40 p.m. Now, here's a question. Where is Milo? Is he in New York? Is he on the East Coast? I don't know. It's tough to know. But I suspect this was after Dave took that walk and realized he had no more friends. And uh, he wrote, this still your number? What, I'll do it, Milo. What do you want? That is very waspishly of you, too. Uh, your interview with JP was good, that's all. I was nothing but loyal, helpful, and supportive to you since the day we met. But you threw me to the wolves and did nothing to defend me when they came for me over total bullshit. Then you had the chutzpah to publicly gloat about my irrelevance. So why are you texting, texting me now? Feeling the heat, are we? They are coming for you. I won't waste energy trying to sabotage or harm you, but I sure am going to savor the spectacle. Go to hell, Dave. Wow. I love the part, too. That's like um, he, he borrows that phrase, you know, um, when they came for me, you did nothing. Yeah. I'm not even sure what you're talking about. I watched the interview this weekend and thought it was excellent. That's all. Okay, then. Bye, Dave. You deserve every bit of what's coming your way. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. I love Dave saying, I'm not even sure what you're talking about. I just watched the interview. I'm not, there's nothing else going on in my life that's no, making me reach No, it is total out. coincidence that uh, I'm having to take a walk around the block. And, uh, oh. You know, they say you got to be nice pe <clears throat> to people on your way up because you're going to see them on your way to wherever alt-right grifters go when they get canceled. Now, here is a uh, tweet by uh, Eric Weinstein. He is of the Weinstein brothers, not the, um, not the one that uh, was, uh, just went, to, I think, to go into jail or something like that, Harvey Weinstein, not that one. Different one, yeah. Different one. Uh, this guy, uh, is this the guy who was the professor? Uh, no, I think that's Brett. So this is the guy who's the uh, was the uh, works for Peter Thiel. Yeah, managing director at Thiel Capital. So okay. he's gonna he might be the leftist for uh, Dave. It's hard to he's, keep he's all left. the shitty wines and uh, straight. So uh, Eric Weinstein says there's something very odd and perhaps new happening around Dave Rubin. Uh, Rubin report we we could call it hate blinding, <laughs> in analogy to being left snow blind. There is now a perma swarm of hater accounts that harass Dave constantly. 
seemingly to get him to become desensitized to all criticism. This is a bizarre construction, but let's just stay, let's just stay with the, the hate blinding. He's getting hate. Now, Dave Rubin, of course, has promoted in various different ways between his guests and I think his own commentary. The idea that like there's no hate speech, right? You shouldn't play the victim. Here is the hate blinding that is coming uh, that he screen grabs from Twitter. It is uh, a um, Twitter guy, Hassan JF. I don't know how many followers he has, but he says, everybody spam, quote, debate Sam Cedar, end quote, into the chat and send super chats. <laughs> that as, is not spam, by the way. Yeah. As spam Lauren is like an Chen, ad. Yes, exactly. As Lauren Chen is uh, interviewing the Rubin Report. I guess this was uh, six days ago this happened. And uh, the latest, this is on, uh, it, you know, two weeks ago, there is um, four different people. Take that universe. Oh, no, take that universe. Scroll down. Looks like one guy. One guy. Okay. And, okay, and here's uh, here's more. Okay, yeah. Uh Two of the people are the same person who wrote that. And then uh, two other people who wrote, debate Sam Cedar, you coward. <laughs> so that's the, that's the blinding amount of hate. The perma swarm. The perma swarm around Dave Rubin. That's real hate, folks. This other stuff like uh, the bigotry and whatnot. Uh, that's not real hate. And then he goes on to say, Eric Weinstein, since I hold to believe a reasonable, limited, and warranted critique of the Rubin Report, Dave has asked me if I could come on a show to discuss what the heck is going on from the perspective of a good faith leftish critique of Rubin Report guests, questions, balance, and effect. I'm going to have on a regular guest. Yeah. Literally a guy who was involved in the conversation that he referenced when he said I, my brain was still in recovery mode from taking in too many high level important ideas. Literally a guy who's never been on any other show uh, to discuss this stuff except for the Rubin Report. I don't know if we'll do it, but we're talking about it. it certainly doesn't make sense to have to wade through a daily miasma of hate to get constructive criticism. It's a miasma of perma swarm. So, so the argument is, is what's happening is is that this perma swarm of hater accounts, <laughs> which is <laughs> responded to afterwards, um, and uh, and this perma swarm of, of hater accounts, apparently the idea is <laughs> to get Dave desensitized, desensitized to legitimate criticism so that he is completely in the dark as to how to get better at whatever he does. Or exactly maybe it. we're doing it for his own good so he doesn't get his feelings hurt anymore. That's another thing it could be. I'm it's, trying to sensitize Dave. I'm not trying to desensitize Dave. Well, that is, you know, that is one dimensional chess thinking. Uh, but this dude is like 18 dimensional chess thinking and uh, on your behalf. Pretty impressive stuff. Um Pretty impressive stuff. I can't find the I can't find the good faith critique and all the noise to signal. Oh, he literally <laughs> said, exactly what "I'm it not is. owned." Oh my god! Like, just friggin' shrink and transform into a corn cob already, Dave. Come on.